Come on in, go in. Nice to meet you. Hi, Justin Christensen. Nick, nice to meet you. Justin, Mike Whitney. Nice to meet you. Brad Nice to meet you, Brad. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. You guys are fine. We'll just take some notes as we go. No, we're just going to pass the door. Yes. Uh, it doesn't shut very well. Yeah, if you think for a construction company, we didn't have sort of fixed by now, but it happens. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm just planning on doing a little bit of review and stuff that I've heard from the previous meetings that we've had. So, design technicians and engineers such as Austin or Kent, if you're familiar. Um, in the past, the projects and the issues that I've heard that we're kind of going through that you guys were having with the uh, parking lot is that there's a little drop off when it rains, it kind of puddles up. And so, you can't fill in that area with dirt because then when it rains, it's going to flood. Am I kind of on the... Yeah, we got a little drainage pond back there that everything kept that drains to, but obviously we got to expand our parking lot. Mm -hmm. And we're... The only, way, only place we can really expand is cover up that drainage uh, basin. and um, So we got to figure out what we're going to do with all that water. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Then that's good. So I just kind of, for SAD, we have a couple projects and um i mean we specialize in water management in case you're familiar uh, i know that there's some opposing companies in cardi that also like crumpler plastic and so i'll do my best to kind of compare and point you towards us if i can um but some of our uh, products i mean you're working with the radisson hotel right up there in that area yep. okay so we are currently the leader in underground stormwater technology and we do have a new product that we just released specifically built for parking lots and the groundwater retention, which is called StormTech. If you aren't familiar, it is a system of underground, under parking lot uh, pipes and filters and uh, fabrics and sort of, it's a retention detention system. And so what we'll do is simply the process of when we choose to redo these parking lots is we'll lay down some of our geotextile uh, we'll help you guys out with that. We'll get all the materials shipped on site and we'll place foundation, get our fabric layer covered. Uh, it's permeable, so the water that we'll filter through will go safely into the ground. You won't have to worry about flooding. And we'll run a bunch of our storm tech pipes throughout the underground layers. They range in depth from 12 feet to 30 feet, so you shouldn't have to worry about uh, breaking or any brittling pipes. 12 um, to 30 foot deep. <laughs> Yep. And so we have three products of the Storm Tech. There's 35, 45, and 7200, which it really is just a size. And the higher you go, the deeper and the larger they are, uh, the more strength in case you're building on like a, oh, a high residential zone, you're going to have many vehicles. And depending on how we do that, we have different sizes. So yeah, we can always work with that depending on what your guys' load is going to be. And I'd be more than glad to go out there. We can figure out what we're talking about still. Um, but we'll place down our plus fabric, like I said, permeable, the water will go through it. We'll put our chambers down, they're easily stackable. They stack kind of like Legos almost. You set them down, they clip onto each other in the ends, very easy to put them in the ground and they're guaranteed to stay for 75 years. And so they have really good qualities. Um, and today's age, they're environment, ooh, environmentally friendly. And so after that 75 year range and even farther, you won't have to worry about any environmental issues with those pipes down there. And the simple product is I have some papers here for you guys. You get kind of a visual. So this is everything that we have on our company, but down the center is the important goodies. So these are, like I said, some of our simple products that we offer, but the bottom two pictures are the pictures relating to the storm tech. And so you can kind of get a look to how large the project that we're able to work with and how that system works. And so that middle picture shows that that gray circular tube is where the storm basin will sit on the top and we can have multiple of these throughout a parking lot. So that way um, we have multiple areas to allow water to come in. That water will filter through into these black pipes and get shunt through all of the storm, deck, storm tech drains. And so, like I said, those orange tanks are just top half ovals. Uh, everything underneath allows sediment, trash, water to go through. Uh, the trash and sediment is stopped, the water filters through safely and at a rate that doesn't allow for environmental dangers like uh, sinkholes or stuff like that. And so 
What we do every so often with these is we come through and we'll vacuum them out with a specific uh, specific kind of jet vac that we have, pushes all of that into that tube. So your company will come out and maintain it? You can say will a lot. So you guys are going to install and as a manufacturer, you guys are going to install and do all that stuff. I'm mistaken. I'm sorry. We will get that through our distributors to you, but then our company will be the one that comes out to do the maintenance on it, the vacuuming of the, uh, the storm tech. And so, like I said, with the, the materials and stuff, we'll get through to a distributor, the maintenance on it, the work that we'll do vacuuming comes from us. And so that shouldn't be a process that takes very long. There's not a lot of time that has to happen between uh, every maintenance shift that we have, but it's a fairly simple one. It shouldn't take very long for projects. And are there any questions so far? You're talking about uh, fabric. Um, I guess, yeah, what's the maintenance time frame on those? I mean, just from uh, my experience, you know, sometimes that stuff can get kind of plugged up. We get a lot of, you know, fines in there. And, yeah. Um, you know, for, for, for 12 to 30 foot deep, uh, what, uh, you know, are we going to have some maintenance issues down the road with that? Or mm -hmm. So the entry holes in all the storm tank pipes are large enough to keep from large sediment and trash from clogging it. So we don't have to worry about that. The fabric is our newest, um, so our newest fabric that we have developed. It's really strong and also environmentally friendly. Um, when we run the back across it to get all the debris out, it rolls over, it doesn't tear it up. You don't have to worry about holes or anything. And the basin that sits on top of the tube is thin enough to stop really large trash and rocks and stuff from going down it. So we shouldn't have any clogging issues with any of those materials. And um, all the sediment is to free flowy or freely flow, I guess. And so with enough rainwater, it shouldn't be a problem. There won't be clogging issues or maintenance issues with any of the fabric. And the storage capacity we got. So each pallet that we send in, depending on the sizes, they come in at either like five, seven, or nine uh, chambers. They, the way they're built, they're just clogged up. And so they'll stack on top of each other really simply. How big are these chambers? So the 3,500 ones are about six and a half feet wide. And the larger ones that are 7,200 are about eight feet wide. And the differences between those up to the three is the width is roughly a foot difference for each one, but height wise, it gets bigger and bigger. And that's just to sustain the lower depths or the higher integral structure, the integral structure that you need from the upper surface. And so they have. So we're draining off a pretty good size area, even with the new parking lot and the existing parking lot tying into it. Um, you know, are we going to. We get a four or five inch rain. Are we going to have any issues with storage capacity or uh, or uh, um, releasing some of that? Uh. Yeah. So the parking lot is going to be large enough, and the size of the storm tank that we install is large enough to one. It's a detention and retention system, so water will travel horizontally throughout all of these storm tank tubes, and as it's traveling, it will filter through. Um, the height of these is roughly two feet. And once you get to the 7,200, they're almost far enough to comfortably stand in. Um, so with inches of rain, it won't be a problem. There's enough distance there to cover everything. And as it's retaining and going through the water, it will continue drifting through. And if there is an area that we can outlet, we can continue moving some of our own pipes onto the edge and letting it into like an outlet basin to be released elsewhere. If that is how the uh, kind of environment works. So maybe I'm a little confused here. Okay. Um, the the stormwater filters in this, this concrete basin here is is that a separate filtration from what we're seeing down here? Yes, those are just general products. Those okay. filters don't have anything to do with the storm tech. Okay. But if it was something that you would need to be in, like want to install, it wouldn't be something to worry about because the fabric that's with the storm tech is kind of a filter in itself. Mm -hmm. allowing the rainwater to go, but keeping everything else up. Okay. So, and then, then that helps clarify things. Thank you. The, the other question I had, you were talking a little bit about the, the depth um, up to 30 feet or something like that. Um, you know, the elevation change we're looking at between a pond, uh, parking lot, the pond isn't, isn't a whole lot. It's not yeah. 30 feet by any means. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you use? Lift pumps in to evacuate that? Or, I mean, because the... When we're doing maintenance? No, or, or for, for what it when it drains away. Yeah. Oh, okay. Drains away out like an outlet, basically. Well, no, I guess what I'm getting at is that the, I'm a little confused 
um, when when you're referring to um, I don't know what, what, what you're trying to so because if you're running all that down thirty feet, are we going to um, you know, is it going to soak away down there, or or or, or how how is it going to escape? So that you know, we have a we have a two inch rain on Sunday, but then on on Wednesday, um, you know, we have another three inch rain. Okay. I mean, how, how are we how are we making sure? I guess that you know we're we're able to continually you know manage that that stormwater. Issue. Yeah. So whether you go that deep or not, there's enough distance, and the fabric is permeable enough to allow a fair flow of water to go through it. So, and with how much distance that we have to cover, the problem of too much water won't be an issue. Um, I mean, as it drains down and goes horizontally across, it's going down continuously. And so whether you have multiple days of rain, there's going to be enough drop and distance with all of the storm tech that it's not going to be an issue. Is there, ever, is there any uh, concern, you know, if we got these things stacked from 12 to 30 feet and they're all, you know, they're draining or soaking away, is there any issues of, uh, or concerns of, um, saturating that soil to where, you know, all of a sudden we're going to be, our, uh, our parking lot's going to become structurally unstable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the way, the speed that the water will drain down through the fabric is low enough and in small enough intensities to not dislodge any of the soil underneath. And so if that is a serious concern, something that we can look at, we do have solutions. We can put underground piping through the permeable layer to release the water completely elsewhere. Um, in Nebraska, usually with our aquifer, it's actually a positive thing to let the water get back down there. But I see with the structural integrity, it will. Because I mean, that, that deep and this close to the river, yeah, we're going to be in that uh, water table, water yeah. table down there. So yeah. I guess that that's a little bit of a concern on on our end there. Um, I mean, as long as we have you know have the opportunity to be able to uh, discharge some of that extra water, I mean, I think that's that's going to be important because. Unfortunately, it rains, of course, here, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, environment, like uh, landscape pending, we will be able to take locations of the parking lot and have pipes that drip out into maybe the river or other areas where the water will safely be distributed. So the, the, there is a chance then that we may need a lift pump because we're going to potentially be below the water table pretty quick. Yeah. And yeah. so we would have to be able to get that, 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 water out of that reservoir down there. Because yeah, if we're wet down there, we're not going to be able to yeah. discharge very well or soak away. Yeah. And I don't know a whole lot on that, but I would love to, I can take a look, talk to some people, try to figure out that situation if that's something that's a serious concern. Yeah, so, it, it, yeah we need to know because it would add cost to the property. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I understand. Yeah, that. yeah, obviously, you know, we're well, going to be fairly, you know, cost effective and uh, efficient with whatever we're doing. Um, I mean, what what kind of time frame does this thing take to install? Yeah, to From install perspective. So installing is just really simple. Uh, a parking lot of this size on the bottom picture will take half a day roughly. Um, they stack really easily, and when they come down, there's little divots on the end, kind of like holes. You will you snap them over the next one in line, screw it down, nail it down. Um, we're digging a hole in a half a day, 30 foot hole in a half a day. Oh, not the hole. Placing, oh. placing the, the okay. hole in tech. I was just making sure. Digging a hole would take much longer than that. But no, when we're doing the storm tech, that stuff, it easily snaps together. And those pieces, all the orange tech will snap on each other. You can screw it down or whatever methods are best for dealing with that kind of soil. And so. And so then this is all going to be covered under concrete when it's done, right? So once we place all this, we'll cover it all up with dirt or some sort of rocky layer. And then, yeah, your concrete and stuff will go on top. Yeah. You just have an area drain or something that it goes to? An area to drain? An area drain that basically captures all the water or you doing curb drains or how, do, how does it, I mean, that might be a little bit more for our civil engineer to, to determine, but is that how you guys anticipate it's like an uh, area inlet drain? Yeah, it kind of depends on how the parking lot's set up, I think. Uh, the it, it kind of depends on how if you want to slope your parking lot or if there do want to be some uh, deeper areas, almost like something like a golf course where there are certain areas that are deeper. And then those areas we could fill in with our basins, connect them all through the pipes, allow different areas of the parking lot to flow. Uh, if you sloped it in a certain way, then we could put these at the bottom and spread them back through the parking lot. And it's something that would easily filter down through. So, so you're a manufacturer rep. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. 
So that means that we're going to have to contract with either us or you. We're going to have to contract with somebody once this is installed then to finish the concrete. Yes, sir. If, if there are issues, whose responsibility does that become at that point in time? What kind of issues? Uh, maybe it doesn't function correctly or whatever the case is. Yeah. Because there's, I'm assuming the service that they're going to take the concrete back out in places. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, if the service with any of the products goes downhill, that's on us. We guarantee a 75 year underground treatment that they'll be fine. They won't rupture. Nothing bad will happen to the storm tank or any of our pipes. So, so, so when you say it's on us, is it the manufacturer of, of the storm the tank product or is it the installer? The yeah. manufacturer. Although we can't have people out there to not guide, but kind of make sure that everything goes the way that it needs to because these aren't complicated, but there could be situations where um, there has to be regulations for how some stuff goes. We can figure that out. So do you have, uh, are there any other areas close or projects around the area that you've uh, installed this product before? Yes, we, what was it? I think it was just up in Lexington. There was a parking lot for the high school that got redid, redone. And we had some of our guys and Lexington, I believe it was, uh, where was it? Orthman Manufacturing was doing some of that. I mean, the manufacturing was supplying the parts, but we did have another construction company. I guess I don't exactly remember their name, but they did redo a parking lot and we helped them out with that. That's a much smaller parking lot. Lexington isn't a huge place mm -hmm. compared to like party or such. Um, and so we did help them install some of the 3500 MC storm tech. And so far it's worked really well for them. Do you have any um, uh, contacts or references we could uh, kind of, I guess, reach out to and see, you know, what their experience has been with the product since you've uh, uh, they've had it for a year or two? It's a great question. I guess I haven't written down any other contact information. I can find you the project engineer for the Lexington parking lot and get back to you on that if you need. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, I can do that. That's my mistake. So, so what 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 kind of lead time are we talking about here? If we decide to pull the trigger with this thing, because mm -hmm. uh, we've got, I'm assuming, lead time with with the people that manufacture this, and then we're we're who, who works with the installer. I mean, who's establishing those appointments and lead times? Is that you doing that? Who's doing that? We try to work closely with the companies that mm -hmm. will be utilizing these products. We also go through some of our close suppliers, such as Wind Supply or Kelly Supply here in Kearney, to help dish that out and kind of work on a time frame. Uh, the lead time for most of our products is less than two weeks, uh, especially being out here in Kearney. Um, well, station in Omaha, so really, yeah, about two weeks at most, um, and then with our suppliers, we'll get those on, we'll send them out. And like I said, we can help get that all set up. But. Does this require any special inspections by the EPA or by the state or any That's special right. licenses? All this technology has been approved already through the EPA and other sites. You, you have documentation yes. indicating that? Somewhere on our website. I would have to pull that up and look at it, but it is on there. Okay. I would just want to jump back to that lead time a little bit again. You're saying two weeks. Uh, it, are you talking two weeks for them to produce these tubes and the and the... two weeks for it to get shipped on site? Okay, but then who, who's going to handle the installation lead times? Is that us? Do we find a contractor or you guys take the whole backfill it? Get rid of the dirt. I mean, is that is that something that we have to take care of, or is that would that be under that full installation? Um, the hole is on you guys. We will supply the covering that we put and the fabric, the rocks, the storm tech, and then the layer over the storm tech. And then that leaves you guys to put your layer on top of the parking lot. So we're going to have to contract with somebody that, that's laying concrete to, to finish the job. Yes, so we, we do unfortunately only work with the storm tech devices. Um, we'll layer everything over the tech, and we'll flatten it out, and leave it up to that. But that is un that's unfortunate all that we do. So I'm not in the concrete business, but is there, there are any special requirements that these people would have to follow? No, nope. this so yeah, driving over it. I mean, you know, obviously we're gonna be for 12 foot down, we're gonna be putting quite a bit of um backfill on top of it. You know, we're we're gonna be running scrapers and dozers and and yeah. semis. I mean, um any issues with uh durability? So hey, it really depends on how much uh weight of the parking lot we're thinking the 7200 mc storm techs can hold this 
it was a it was larger than you would ever need for a parking lot. I don't remember the exact number. I definitely will figure that out. But the higher, the heavier that it gets, our pipes are. Apologize, we actually have another meeting coming up. Um, yeah. We got it. Got it. I'll, I'll get to. We got a scheduling meeting actually with Mr. Eunice. Um, okay. We think I could give that a number really quick to reach out to next time. Yeah, I think Nick. Uh, Nick's gonna handle some of that. Um, okay. Uh, three hundred eight, seven six four, seventy one, fifty eight. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. You do that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>